I think it's fair to say I've had a little bit of experience with transitions on this channel from redesigning the ones that you guys submit with your streams, plus the ones that I do for high-end streamers like Pokimane. From the basic to the more advanced, Stinger transitions are a great way to add production value to your streams. And considering most streamers have logos for their brand identity, uh, I had an idea. So I thought I'd break it down, give you guys some tips on what goes into making a good transition and give you guys some of the basics of how you go ahead and make one yourself. It's gonna be simple, it's gonna be clean, it's gonna be minimal, exactly how we like it. Before we jump into the video, I do want to quickly remind everyone I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday over on Twitch. The link to my channel is in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Let's talk about transitions. Stinger transitions are a very common thing. I'm pretty sure every streamer knows what a Stinger transition is. And if you don't, here's a bit of a breakdown of what one is. That there was a Stinger transition. It's a way to jump from scene A to scene B in a really cool and really fluid and dynamic way. They're a really cool way to jump from one scene to another. And along with that, add some pizzazz and some flair to your streams. And there are a ton of free solutions out there for those that want to get a transition for their stream. They can go online, download one and implement it into their stream. But many streamers have logos they want to use on their stream and in their transitions. And you can't really get that with a free solution. So it occurred to me, I'm a fairly decent designer and motion graphics chap, so uh, why don't I just show you how to make one? Show you guys how you can make a really clean, really simple and really modern transition that will add considerable production value to your streams. And again, disclaimer, this is all individual, it's all personal. This is what I think a cool transition will look like and what I think the majority of people will want for their streams. Take what I do, learn from it, use the tips and tricks that I mention and apply them to your own learning and use them to create things that you like for your own stream. Let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are still interested in having your own really cool, awesome transition for your stream, but you don't want the hassle of learning new animation software, well, we've got some awesome stuff for you. At the end of this video, I show you guys how you can download a free DaVinci Resolve template that you can use to build and customize your own transition. But first, before we get into that, let's jump into some animation. So I'm inside of Apple Motion right now, which is what I use to build the Lemonade transition with. Again, you can do this kind of thing in any modern motion graphics and video editing application. Just make sure you're able to export a transparent video file from the application and uh, you're set to go. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my library, go to my generators, and I'm gonna create a color solid that's going to animate and cover the entire scene. And what I wanna do is actually change these colors to be the similar colors that Andy or Lemonade uses on his stream for his brand. So the kind of transition I'm going for is a two-tone style color transition using Lemonade's branding. And what I wanna do is actually animate the colors in, in a sort of staggered effect. So what I'm gonna do is actually animate in a darker green first, follow closely behind with a lighter shade of green and then the yellow. Let me show you what I mean in a bit more detail. So what I'm gonna do is basically duplicate the green layer and then make it a darker shade of green. Next, I'm gonna select all of these layers, go into the inspector and go to properties, click a keyframe for the X position, move all the way over and add another keyframe for the X position. And then I'm gonna go back to my starting position and offset the X position for all of them so they're off the screen. The reason why I work backwards like that is because you set the starting position before and then the ending position you go back to so you're working in reverse. It keeps things a bit easier to manage. You don't gotta worry about numbers and positions and keyframes and all that. And it's a little trick if you want to, you know, work a bit smarter and not harder with motion graphics. From there, what I'm gonna do is actually put the dark green underneath of the original green layer, and then I'm just gonna start offsetting the time on all of these layers. But before then, what I'm gonna do is actually select all of these keyframes, go in and adjust the easy ease keyframe curve to make them just a little bit more pronounced, a bit more of a ease and whiz style animation. So I'm gonna really exponentiate this curve here and make it just a little bit more exaggerated. So now what I'm gonna do is actually offset all of these layers just by a little bit in time. I'm gonna just click and drag the two top layers offset the timing just a little bit and then drag this yellow just a little bit as well so what we have is we have a staggered effect like so the darker green animates on first like so is then you know chased after very closely by our main color green then followed 
by the yellow. So that is our main part of the animation so far. What we're going to do next is bring in the logo that we want to use for the project itself. So I'm bringing in Lemonade's logo. There we go. And I'm going to just position this where I want it to be roughly in time with the animation. And what I want to do for this animation is I want the logo just to pop in and appear and then just scale down to the right size. I don't want it to have a dramatic entrance. I want it to appear and then scale down to the right size in a very quick fashion. It's a very common animation technique. I don't actually know what the name of it is called, but it looks cool. So uh, we're going to be using it here. So what I'm going to do is going to select the logo itself. I'm actually going to animate the group itself. Then I can adjust the logo and replace it if I need to at any point. I'm going to animate the logo. Set a keyframe for the Z position. I'm going to animate it zooming out and zooming down. Move in time just a little bit and then position this and offset the Z position in time. Just change that and give it a smaller value. And then again, what I'm going to do is actually go in and adjust the easy keyframes like so to be a bit more of a exponential graph. And then what we have, we have this animation here where the logo just pops in and then scales down. I actually want to make it a bit more of a drastic animation and have the logo appear halfway through the zoom down. So it looks as though it's just popped in halfway through its animation. And the easiest way of doing that is because we've animated the group. All we need to do is just change the input of this logo. So it pops in halfway down through the animation. I can also go in and adjust the keyframes just a little bit more, make it a little bit faster, and that will again increase the kind of severity of the animation and of that zoom. So I've got this animation to a point where I like it so far, but I want to bring in some extra elements to fill in the two sides of the Lemonade logo. I think it's just a little bit bare, and I think I know exactly what I want to bring in. I want to use some assets from Apex Legends. I want to bring in Wraith's Heirloom and use it as an asset to bring a little bit more movement, a bit more dynamics into the transition, and have two of them animate from the side and land either side of the Lemonade logo. So I've brought in the uh, heirloom here inside of Apple Motion. I'm gonna animate it and scale it down just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna animate it from the right half of the screen to the left. I'm gonna have it animate and spin on and land either side of the logo. So I'm gonna position it where I want the final logo to be. And what I'm gonna do is actually set keyframes for the X and the Z rotation, the X position and the Z rotation. What I'm going to do is actually going to move backwards once again, like we did before, and work backwards and have our starting position keyframed already, then work backwards to where it's going to animate from. So now we've got the animation figured out. I'm going to stylize this and then just duplicate it and flip it for the other side of the animation. So there we have the last little details of the transition completed. The last thing to do is now completely end the transition. And the way I'm going to do that is by using the two background colors, the two tone colors that we are using, and move them in opposite directions to make it almost like a kind of Venetian wipe kind of effect on the transition to make the logo and the knives disappear. So simply all I'm going to do is go into my elements here. I'm actually going to group the logo and the knives elements together in a single unit so it's easier to animate. And then what I want to do is actually have the background color spin in an opposite direction before actually animating out. So what I'm going to do is select the group layer, the master group layer for the background colors, go into the properties, add a keyframe for the Z rotation, and they're going to move in just a little bit and then give this a 180 degree rotation like so. Again, give it the same kind of keyframe interpolation as we've been doing for all the other things as well. Make the animations match. So now we have those elements all done and lined up and are correctly positioned. All we need to do now is have the animations for the two color solids animate away and then use those as masks to make the rest of the transition disappear. So we're gonna animate these two elements off screen by selecting the one, clicking on the Y position in the inspector and seeing a keyframe, doing exactly the same thing for the yellow, moving down just a little bit and then offsetting the yellow up like so and then doing the same thing for the green but making that go all the way down and the next thing to do you need to create an image mask for this element for the element on top and these way of doing that is by going into the elements layer click an object and go add image mask selecting the background colors layer dragging that into the image well and you may notice now that the colors aren't there it turns them off by default turn them back on again so as you can see if you play this back right now you'll notice that there is no transparency when these elements slide away it also takes away the elements of the uh, logo 
and the knives with it. So you may need to tweak around with the timing. If you need to adjust that, you can do that with the keyframes here. And that is pretty much my workflow when it comes to doing really cool and minimal and simple transitions for your streams. At the heart of it, they are really simple, simple techniques on their own, but when they are combined together, they make a really fluid and dynamic transition that will look great on any stream. So these are some of the more basic tips and tricks when it comes to making your singer transitions, but you can get way more advanced with this stuff. For example, you can have a transition that will show off the next scene as well as still keep on the scene before it, just like the one we did for Pokemon. If you wanna check out those videos, we have them linked down in the description below. And I also go in depth on how you guys can make the Pokemon transition on my own personal YouTube channel. Link for that also in the description down below. But say you wanna have a simple transition. You don't want all these crazy things going on. You just want your logo and a transition for your stream, but you've got no way to make it. Well, guess what guys, I got you covered. In the description down below, you will find a link to the Discord and inside of that Discord in the designs and sounds channel, you will find a free DaVinci Resolve project template. Inside of this project template, you will find everything you need to create, customize and modify the transition that you want for your own stream. I'm calling it the Transition Toolbox, still working on the name, but let me show you how it works. Open the project and you'll find a couple of different things. You'll notice four compound clips, a folder named Assets, and a transition template timeline. You can customize this transition any way you want. Changing the logo, changing the background color, even changing how the transition animates on and off screen. All you gotta do is this. Right click on the compound clips labeled Matt In, and mat out. Go into the folder labeled assets and you'll find a couple of different video files. These are different kinds of ways for the transition to animate in and animate out. Find one you like by double clicking it and loading it into the viewer. Drag it into the compound clip and put it above everything else. Repeat the same steps for both the in and the out mat clips. Make them the same, make them different, it's completely up to you. From there go to the logo compound clip open in timeline and then import your logo into Resolve. Drag and drop your logo onto the template layer and turn off the template layer by clicking this button here. And then scale it to fit to a decent size if you need to. Then finally go back to the main transition template timeline and click on the background solid layer to change the color to your own personal branding. And finally head on over to the deliver page and export it using the Apple ProRes 4444 preset to keep its transparency. If you want you can convert it to a WebM format if you wish but for the most part you've just made your own transition and if you're a little bit more advanced in the ways of DaVinci Resolve feel free to tweak anything in the template to your liking like any of the animation presets we have inside of the logo and if you want more ways to stylize the intro and outro styles for the transition check out online for some matte transitions we've linked a few in the description down below as well as provided a couple with the DaVinci Resolve project template feel free to use the ones that we provided but if you want more options then check out those links in the description below I also want to give a huge shout out to camera Tim in the Alpha Gaming Discord. He's one of the surgeons and he was a massive help with figuring all the logistics about this template out and getting stuff sorted for you guys. So go give him some love, say thank you. These links are also in the description down below. I really hope you guys found this video helpful and if you guys have any questions you might have about the ideas behind the things we mentioned in this video, then feel free to jump into my Twitch chat. I'm live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The link to my channel is in the description down below. Also, if you want to be part of the larger community and chat with like-minded people, streamers, designers and content creators, then feel free to join the discord the link for that is also in the description down below and guys once again thank you so much for watching until next time happy streaming maybe oh, where does this go can i run a wall with this i can whoa Shit! Woo!